Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the top three PvE builds when it comes to tanking. Tanking in New World can be very difficult if you have a rough team, so you want to make sure you're doing the best you can with these three builds. So before we get into the builds, I do want to say I do stream on Twitch every single Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern. And if you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on before we get into these builds, because we do builds every single day, pretty much, talking about PvE, PvP, giving you guys the rundown on everything going around on New World. So the first build that we're going to really focus in on is going to be something a little bit more unique than you're usually used to. A lot of people are just running sword and shield, hammer, heavy armor, carnelian gems, something very, very basic. I'm going to give you a bunch of different options today. So the first one we're going to see here, obviously going to be that sword and shield. Sword and shield, you're going to need these three abilities pretty much every single time. So we have the reverse stab, shield bash, and defiant stance. And of course, you're going to want your Carnelian Gems in every single weapon when you are a tank. It doesn't matter what weapon you're using, whether it's the Great Axe, Hatchet, Warhammer, Spear, Sword and Shield, put that Carnelian Gem in there. It's going to help you a lot with the taunts. And of course, you're going to need Corrupted Bane, Angry Earth Bane, Ancient Bane, depending on what dungeon you're doing. The Bane type is very, very important for that increased damage. You are going to do a little bit more damage than you're used to going enchanted so light and heavy attacks deal 9.8 percent more damage you're going to want to take this because this is going to help you deal a lot more damage and you also have an alternative if you want to take thwarting strikes instead because you're running 300 strength you definitely can do so on that sword and shield next up we have of course refreshing move a lot of people love refreshing move for obvious reasons it's going to give you your cooldowns very very quickly back in return for every single auto it's huge now we have the Great Axe. This is going to be the first build. It's going to be the Sword and Shield plus the Great Axe. With the Great Axe, you're going to take kind of the obvious ones here. Gravity Well, Maelstrom, and of course, Reap. It's going to be a very, very strong build. And of course, you're going to want a Bane type again on your weapon like always. And depending on what dungeon you're doing, take the Corrupted Angry Earth Ancient Bane. Uh, so now we have Thwarting Strikes, of course, yet again on the Great Axe. This is going to be your best in slot. It's going to make you do a lot more damage per auto attack. It's going to be very, very important. Now we have some sustain coming up, and of course, a lot of clumping abilities and capabilities with the Insatiable Gravwell. Gain 52% of your damage with Gravity Well back as health, and you cast another one in a 4 meteor radius. It's going to, like I said, help a lot with grouping enemies and healing you back. Enfeebling Maelstrom is also very important. It's basically going to add reducing their damage by 14% for 8 seconds, because this is something you're most likely going to take on, like I said, the armor. The only things on your Great Axe is going to be the Bane type and the Thwarting Strikes. And if you can, Refreshing Move as well for, like I said, the Great Sword. Or sorry, not the Great Sword, but the Great Axe and Sword and Shield. And you can see here why we would take the Contagious Reverse Stab. Reverse Stab transfers an active debuff from self to target hit. And Reverse Stab is also going to deal 10% more damage. Next up, we have Crippling Reap. If target hit with Reap is below 50% health, they are slowed, reducing movement speed by 50% for 4 seconds and 31% if it's on gear, which it will be in this case. Diminishing Shield Bash. This is going to obviously be if, dependent on what shield type you take. Typically, you're going to be a tower shield if you're just going a full heavy boy build. And it's going to be very, very useful to get the attributes as well. Above 300 strength. And depending on how good you are at the game, add more constitution if you are dying. You want to make sure you're staying alive more importantly than anything else. So here we have the hatchet build as well. Hatchet, you're going to want the berserk, rending throw, and infected throw. And of course, you're going to want the bane type again and a carnelian gem slotted this is going to make sure you have taunt activated and do a lot of damage and of course again enchanted and thwarting strikes are going to be the two options you have you can go for enchanted or you can go for thwarting strikes but one of the biggest things you're going to want to take is going to be in your armor perks and we're going to talk about that here as we get through the thwarting strike so deal 12 percent additional damage while you have active grit of course a big thing when you have 300 strength so refreshing torrent is huge for any hatchet player in pve every hit of uh, the raging torrent reduces the active cooldowns on the hatchet by 4.8 percent per attack which is huge we have Empowering Rending Throw, which you're always going to use Rending Throw, by the way, if you didn't know. Rending Throw is going to obviously rend the target, which is huge for you. Uh, Keen Berserk, increase crit chance by 27% 
while Keen is active, or sorry, Berserk is active. That's going to be on the weapon, of course, but you're going to actually slot that into your gear, so you'll have a little bit less on the damage side. But here you see the Warhammer as well. The Warhammer is definitely one you're going to want to take because it's going to allow you to have the Shockwave, Path of Destiny, and the Wrecking Ball, which is a very, very strong setup. Carnelian Gem, Corrupted Bane, yet again, going to be the two you're going to take. Now we jump over, and you can switch in the Enchanted for the Warhammer. I like Enchanted, and I like Thwarting Strikes. They're both going to, like I said, for all of these builds, give you a lot of extra damage when it comes to your autos or your basic attacks. So deal 12% additional damage while you have active grit. Yet again, very, very important. Now we have some of the armor perks. So Sundering Shockwave is going to be huge. It's going to inflict Rend, reducing target's damage absorption by 14% for 10 seconds. Refreshing Mighty Gavel as well. Mighty Gavel hits reduce the ability's cooldown by 14%. You can actually activate that twice. Now we have Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball penetrates 19% of the target's armor, which is going to provide a lot of extra damage for you. Here's the attributes you're going to want to take if you run the Warhammer. Now again, this is the different types of differences when it comes to like Angry Earth damage, Ancient damage, Corrupted damage, and Lost damage. So this can help sway what armor, or not what armor, but what secondary weapon you're going to take. So obviously if you're doing Angry Earth, Hatchet, Great Sword, and Great Axe, and Sword and Shield are all going to be great. So Sword and Shield and Great Axe might be your best combo there, or Hatchet. Uh, but you can, like I said, go through that chart and kind of find those things out yourself. You also have the important consumables. So you have coatings, gem dust, you have the oak flesh balm, you have incense, honing stones, ward potions. The trophies, of course, is very, very important. I would definitely get basic trophies across the board. It's going to cost you about 5 6 k depending on what one you're looking for. But three basic trophies is going to be a huge increase to your damage in these dungeons, definitely if you're doing mutated. Here's the light and heavy chart. So if you're going light, medium, or heavy, this is what you can do to really max out at these levels. I would suggest everybody starting out at full heavy and going from there. See if it's something you even want to change into as a medium or a light build. If you'll see in this gameplay in the background, they're actually running a light tank build. And this is going to be very, very strong to continue to apply a lot of damage with your hatchet as well as apply a lot of CC with the Warhammer. So you're not typically going to run this tank build because this tank build does not have sword and shield. And a lot of these groups you're running with are not going to be ready for something without a sword and shield. So just keep that in mind. I do want to say, though, if you guys haven't already, make sure to follow me on Twitch, iGraphicEye, Monday 6 p.m., Thursday 6 p.m., and Saturday 6 p.m. Eastern. We are going to be streaming to you guys. But I want to also kind of remind you guys, all of these builds are viable. There's a ton of viable builds out there in this game right now. So I want you to take a look at all of these, find out which one means the most to you or does the most for you and your group, and let me know in the comments below because this is a video that I want to be very, very quick with. Obviously, you could see that we are trying to get through every single you know, build type very, very quickly just so that you guys had an idea and understanding of each build in under eight minutes. So hopefully I did exactly that. Thank you guys again for tuning in. If you want to go back in the video, definitely feel free to do so because there was points where you know we kind of flew through things, but... There is a lot of viability with every single one of these builds, and I hope you guys enjoy these builds, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.